fever season. Uh, I, I'm hoping to get through it without sneezing too much. How are you doing? Shocker, I am just bearing up because I am a total professional. Of course, you're, you're managed marvellously. This is Annette in a very different guise this week. Welcome. Thank you, Gillian. Nice to be here. It feels very strange though. I'm usually here as Miss Penelope and now I'm here as Annette and I don't know who I am. Mm. So you haven't got the wig to hide behind? No, I haven't, unfortunately. Or the frock. Very plain, very simple in Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's looking very bright to your left. Uh, Michael Sue, we've Salut. got Matt King on my right and Mr. Michael King. You're both kings, mm. aren't you? Mm. I'm actually an ether, but King okay. will do fine. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> I'm feeling Please quite welcome lucky the panelists. Today. Thank you very much. Hooray! Yeah. Hooray. Hooray. Okay, it's probably a bit hot in here. I think we'll have to raise some people up over there. Um, it's been a week for um, things being lost and found, actually. A few dead bodies in the mountains. Just a few. Yeah, we didn't want those that way. And, um, and Crystal. Um, glad that you've been found and you weren't harmed, but uh, come home from Adelaide because we all we She's all miss in Canberra you. now. Is she? Oh, she yes. Is. Oh, she's That's moved. Why did she go to Canberra? Um, she's got the money. <laughs> really? Yes. It, apparently she's in Canberra. It was in the paper today, so... I mm. thought she was in Sydney. That's what I read, that she'd gone to Sydney. Look. There have been crystal sightings. <laughs> she's like Elvis. <laughs> People will be having competitions. Have you sighted crystal today? Mm. <laughs> she gets around it. But somebody we've had in our town this week, huge celebrity from the US, is Judge Judy. I think you've got a... Mm. Yes. Um, well, you, you think you, you, think you uh, hate somebody, but you find out that, um, in fact... Some people have a lot more fans than we think. Mm -hmm. Judge Judy was apparently in Brisbane this week on a literary, literary lunch, among other things. And it's just quite amazing the adulation that she's received from some people. Have a listen to this. Okay. Mm. Well, a, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, a woman yelled out, I'm going to marry your son. I mean... Not only, not only is she a fan of Judy herself, she actually wants to get into her family. <laughs> and Judge Judy told her, told, to, told her to send him a letter. So she's very, she's very quick with the quips. Is well, it worked for Bridget Nielsen, didn't it? Isn't that how she got? Isn't that how she bagged Sylvester Stallone? Was oh, it? She Marry me. No, she sent him. A, she sent him a, a, a fan letter when she was, you know, nothing more than a mere supermodel did. with normal sized breasts. And then she had them inflated. She yeah. must have sent a photo or something. Or she yeah, she did. Yeah, she did photo. send a photo. So yeah. she, in a, in a way, she was probably a male or a bride. Mm. Anyway, back to Judy. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> we, we, sorry, it was thrilling we'll, stuff, we'll, have a, we'll, we'll uh, postpone our Bridget show in, for a couple of weeks, I think. Um, hundreds of fans passed Judy's table, some holding as many as six books to be signed. She smiled at them all and welcomed them and thanked them. A pregnant woman puffed as she climbed the three steps to the stage, but Ju Judy had absolutely nothing to say about that, surprisingly enough. Oh, that's a bit cryptic. I don't know I, I understand um, what that means. Well, she's just there. She doesn't care. She's just, yeah, another $10, thank yeah. you, another $10. Well, actually, you would be surprised um, how much she doesn't care. She actually said about uh, heroin edit heroin addicts, give them all dirty needles and let them die. Quote, oh no, she didn't. She did. I don't understand why we think it's important to keep them alive. So, um... Well, I'm going to have to take... Oh, I'm going to have to sell oh, my six ones. books then. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, I think we're getting a little bit of coloured reporting here because mm. I did I did detect a little note of cynicism in your voice as you read in this article. Mm. <laughs> you don't, I'm not a big fan of Judge. You don't judge. believe I, let's it. Just, yeah. Let's just say I, ca I managed to catch her. <laughs> not necessarily by choice. Don't, you know, the thing I find fascinating about that show is that she is so totally up front. And I think a lot of us feel that if the judicial system was... was uh, you know, used in that manner in most countries, and I mean, there's a there's a small petty type litigations, yeah. but you know, you sort of wonder why the bigger issues aren't being dealt with as, as quickly and in some cases severely. As for the heron comment, well, I mean, if that's an absolute quote, I'd like to know what the rest of the quote was yeah. because yeah. I'm sure there's a little bit more to it. Than and there always is. And mm -hmm. there always is, but it got your attention, which is obviously what the paper was intending to do. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, do you I, think you you don't think it's what Sheena's film intended to do? 
to get to get her into uh, our attention in that way. Like, I don't think she said that to get our attention. Yeah. I don't think she needs any more attention than she's already got. Yeah. I mean, she's got a successful TV show, uh, which is which is screened here, which you know a lot of people watch. Her husband's got, her husband's got, got his own court he show now as well. Court show. Probably a kids' Who's her husband? Well. It's not the Judge Joe Brown, is it? No. <laughs> oh, I'm so disappointed about that. I don't think that would have been fantastic. Hey, wait, wait, watch my husband on the other story. channel. I'm going to get a second opinion, Joe. What do you think? I can't actually watch these courtroom shows. They remind me too much of that um, Jerry Springer oh, show, which yeah. I can't watch, that confrontational it's style of... Um, the one thing mm. about Judy, though, is very fast. The cases are... I don't oh, got to fly Well, the television <laughs> has to be. But at the same time, it was interesting, when, when she was on there, she was on a television show earlier this week. Um, can we mention them on here? Yeah. The panel, the panel. She was on the panel, which I'm sure a lot of people saw. And uh, she was saying, you know, I understand you, you couldn't get something like this up here in Australia because it wouldn't work. And they were saying, well, no, we, we don't have the population for a start. And also, Australians aren't going to put themselves on national television and go through litigation cases right. like this. And I said, why is it that Americans are so keen to do this and she said well you know from the time we're children we have school counsellors we have psychology counsellors and then you go to high school and you've got careers counsellor and you've your voca your vocational guidance counsellor then you you know leave home get married you go to your therapist you go to psych you know psychologist you analyst so america is is brought into this whole psychology thing very very early so they don't mind airing their grievances on television what's more they actually attempted to do uh, get a, an australian one going and um, they ended up not receiving enough people That's wanting exactly to do right. it. That's yeah, exactly well, right. Yeah, we, we just totally don't want to do it, do they? Can't no. imagine it taking off an English. Also, either. I think you have to sign a special kind of contract when you go on these shows. That, yes. Um, because it's not strictly by the law. These judges have a lot of leeway. They do. And, you know, you sign away your rights, basically. You cannot take it further, and yeah. she was mentioning that, you cannot take it to a high court. You have to agree to drop all other legal action to do with this particular case. Yeah. Um, and that, and people are obviously quite prepared to and do that. I think that. they actually get a small fee, whether both plaintiff and defendant... Yeah, well, well, basically, the court pays any, pays any damages. You don't have to pay your own damages. Actually, I thought she was here to... Um, to open the market tavern, we've heard, been hearing so much about lately. <laughs> I mean, Bet TV was there, hoping to get get a bit of footage we, of yeah, her. She would have loved it, actually. I think she would have really loved it. You think it. so? Oh, I like to think so. Yeah. They're terrible when she turned out to be homophobic. Well, 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 if she's saying that about heroin addicts. Anyway, let's have a look about the, at the um, market tavern, which is now open. Hooray. Yeah, and um, just stick on that footage, will you, now, please? Anytime soon, we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, now, now. It's okay. It looks lovely. In fact, oh, there, there we are. are. Oh, it's still out. <laughs> Aren't we having a great time at the market? Mm. And our own little reserve table. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Hey, Matt, Matt. We're going to go upstairs. We'll go upstairs, yeah? look a little bit familiar and yeah. yet at the same time they look quite different. They look a bit different. Right. What's right. like upstairs? People up here. Masses. Oh, oh. oh hello. Uh, hello stranger. Hello stranger. Stranger. Hi guys. Well, and what would you be doing here tonight? Oh, just checking out, seeing what's going on. Oh, okay. And, and, and what do you think of the market so far? It's unreal. Nice, airy, open, big. Come on down, guys. And w w will you be coming back? Oh, <laughs> oh fascinating stuff. <laughs> Didn't that look fun? I'm going there next week. <laughs> That's super. In fact, maybe they need a bit of livening up because there's been a, a gay bar in South Africa that's... Uh, this yes. uh, had uh, something very bad happening. Well, a bomb exploded in um, Cape Town's gay blah bar, it's called. Um, quite a few people injured, up to ten, you know, different papers um, nominate different amounts of people that have been injured. Um, someone lost a foot. Um, it could have been much higher, except the bomb was actually placed sort of around behind a wall, and although all the windows and doors, it might like, look like a huge explosion, mm -hmm. not as many people were hurt as could have been. It was a packed bar at the time. But police thus far have said that no motive can be found for the bombing, which... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, in South Africa, you see, they're so, used to, they're so used to racial stuff. They think, well, they weren't black. What was the problem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think I was... Well, they've, of course, they've got the bloke that um, bombed the um, Admiral Bar in uh, Soho, London, back in April. Mm. 
of this year. But he's, of course, still in a psychiatric hospital undergoing evaluation. So it wasn't so, him. Yeah. No, it couldn't have been. No, it was it, well, one of his other personalities. Well, if he's bombing a gay bar, therefore he must be insane. Mm. Could, could, what possible reason? It's like, so that's I can think of a few, too. you know, why people would feel, um, could feel like doing that, like they have in South Africa. Mm. You were just telling me a little bit about uh, a bit of an immigration story from South Africa. Yes, there was a lady um, staying at our hotel uh, this week and uh, she was saying how wonderful Melbourne was and how well she was treated, but she had a really hard time getting here. They really stuffed her around with her visa and why are you going and she ended up having to take like a 45 minute taxi ride from Soweto to wherever the Australian Embassy is. And once they saw her, they went, oh, you're black. And they just signed the piece of paper and, and gave her a visa. And <laughs> she's like, all her anger just went, what do you mean? She said, what, what, we thought you were white. Apparently, all the white South Africans are getting visas to come out here, tourist visas, and they don't want to go back oh. to South Africa. Oh. So the problem for, is to get a visa to come to Australia at the moment. But if you're black, they're assuming you're going to go back. So you can have a visa, but if you're white, <laughs> they drag you through the mill, as it were, you know. There's a bit of reverse discrimination there. Yeah, well, she was racism. Reverse, exactly. Reverse racism, exactly. And she was um, actually quite shocked. She said, Melbourne's a great place. She said, oh, the people yes. are really friendly. You know, people Coffee's say to great. her, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. And she, was, she felt embarrassed having white people speak to her in mm. that way because she was a guest or a customer or... Whatever. The, the, it's interesting. I, I just like that point, the fact that, you know, being served by white people, when you come from a country where you're very used to having uh, non-white people serving you and being in the role, I mean, it's very much a class system. And we don't really experience that as much here. No. We're very lucky in that way. We don't have, you know, the slaves, and if you have maids and things, well, yeah. it's all on very equal footing. They're legitimate jobs, you have to pay them holiday pay. And well, she was saying even if a white person did serve you, they'd serve you like begrudgingly. We've got to come back with this. We've got somebody very special coming up. Can we say who it is? Yes, we've got Johnny Bowles. Oh, we've pro he's probably oh, dropped the Johnny oh. now, hasn't he? It's Mr <laughs> John Bowles coming up in the second um, half. We might even be able to get him to perform if we ask. Very, very nicely. That'll be exciting, won't it? So, we're off now. Make a cup of tea. Come back. Evening, so sit back oh. and relax, and uh, we'll have another round of applause, please, for Mr. John Bowles. Yeah. Yeah. Well, where are you? You see, he's, he's got the idea of this show. You have to clap yourself. And in fact, we're thinking <laughs> of getting some of those. Um, no, we'll talk about that later. Okay, John. What the hell have you been doing for the last? Uh, how long would it be? Twenty years. Oh, twenty years. <laughs> you don't look old enough to even be twenty. Oh, thank you. <laughs> really? Maybe twenty-five. <laughs> it's twenty years 25. since I was on Young Talent. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't believe that. Scary. That is. Wow. No, Especially since I used to watch it. None of us look a day older. That's right. It really, yeah. that really ages you. Now, of course, I wasn't, I wasn't here then, so I'm, I'm looking forward to sort of hearing about some of the highlights of... Oh, uh, well, how would you describe Young Talent? I sort of like a un oh, well, we were cheesy, that's for sure, but I was going to say an uncheesy. Uh, what's the American one? Like Mickey Mouse wholesome. Club. Oh, it was Mickey a wholesome. Mouse Club. wholesome. Yeah. yeah. But Mickey Mouse Club was oh, very American. Yeah. It was we very weren't. family orientated. And uh, it was variety, very much variety. variety. Centered around a bunch of kids. Yes. And, and what could be more wholesome? Absolutely. Mm. Well, you know, you know Johnny Young, don't you? You know who we Johnny mean, yes, by yes, okay. yes. And so he, he was the host. Was the he was yeah. the host. And it ran for eighteen years. It was a perfect way to also like wind for the week. It was always on a Sunday, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Really? yeah. So it was the sort of thing you. Was it a Sunday? Saturday, Saturday, after, Saturday night. So, yeah. oh, in real time, real time. Yes, yeah. 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 so a kind of singing Brady Bunch. 
Yes. Yes. Yeah, only I think only that's these fair people to say. could sing and the Brady Bunch couldn't. <laughs> but does that mean that you all got on? Because I wouldn't believe that that, that um, child stars would all necessarily get on. I think we did. Really? Yeah, yeah. They kept um, them on. What's that drug they gave Judy Garland? You know, they kids. Oh, kids. What drug take didn't take they give Judy Garland? <laughs> take another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd have loved to have her medicine cabinet. How long were you actually on the show for yourself? Five years. Five years. Yeah. Now I've, I, I never actually saw it when you was on it, but I heard you used to do quite a bit of stuff with Tina Marino. Yes, indeed. And we, we made an album together to, called Tiny Tina and Little John. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Have we got any? Have, Have we, we got, got any? any? Can we hear some? No, sure. I don't think you'd want to. No, can you give us, give us a bit we of a do. blast of <laughs> one of those? Do you know what's <laughs> funny Sorry, is that um, in a couple of the songs, you actually can't tell our voices apart. This was pre oh, voice breaking. Yeah. It is, you know, because I was like, a because she was singing both. Because she was, well, yes. <laughs> she was she tiny. Was Tina Arena. She's tiny. That's right. She, was, she started from this, you know. She was and I was always the shorty. Mm. I, I mean, I'm six really? foot two now. Yeah, oh, I know. Cool. He's a hulk of a man. You looked mm. taller on television, baby. Mm. I was skinny. Yeah. Now, oh, now, looking yeah. back, do you do you do you have the same? Um, do you see it the same way, or do you look at it and think, God, did we really do those sort of things? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you can't help but have the cringe value in your sort yeah. of. The crippling pants, really. I mean, <laughs> they should have been burned, shouldn't they? <laughs> Hello, when they all wear their little. Um, white Total coat and tails yeah, outfits, yeah. you know, and they've oh. got the little... And invariably, they were hand-me-down trousers, so the crutches on all the boys were always around our knees because they were someone who was much older that were oh. hand-me-down. Oh, really? It was like being a, a former member of the pack. Yeah, yeah, I used to have Philip Gould's trousers. Do you oh. find that people that people still treat you like a child when they see you? You're getting the inside story, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, do, <laughs> I but do people think that... No, um, pe people treat you like you're one of the family. It's like they, oh. they look at you so fondly and That's so... Cool. That's because you're in their land room every Sunday. It's true. For, and you realise that they actually, mean. they felt like they knew you. And yeah. when you think over a five year period, it's a long time, particularly mm. if you're growing up with them, mm. that, that they get, it's sort of like you're embedded on their brain, I think. And even now, I mean, I haven't changed that much, I suppose. Some, some you know, have got totally different hair or aged a lot or whatever. So I suppose more than Debbie. others. <laughs> yeah. Don't go and can't. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think they sort of they, they look at you and, and it's like, oh my god, and and it's almost like they want to go up and would hug you. you or would you like to ever see a return of it, like snippets of it come back? You see in rage, you see in rage the snippets of like countdown coming in. Well, they I thought it was on Foxtel. So. It is. There's bits of it on really? Foxtel. I haven't mm. seen it. Do you get money for that? Anyway, the reason. <laughs> do, do you think, do you well, think, I think there yeah. was some money? In it. John, yeah. you're actually. Um, am I right? You're you're putting together a documentary. A doco yeah. On young talent time. Well, basically, you know, if we look back um, to when we were kids, uh, if we think about kids on television, invariably the ones that popped to mind are, are Brady Bunch or people like that, and they're mm -hmm. American. Mm -hmm. But when you think there was 40 kids in Young Talent mm -hmm. Time, mm -hmm. and we know them so intimately, and yet no one's ever spoken to them about anything. Well, I personally didn't watch Young Tell Well, you missed out, didn't you? <laughs> I did. So, so I, I think Benny I decided, Hill was not the same time. Well, I decided that I would put it to them and to say, look, the, you know, the, the, the idea is you grew up on TV. Are you glad you did? Did you enjoy it? How did it affect you? Was it a positive experience? Mm -hmm. oh. What about you know, a, what about change your life for the mm -hmm. good? Or? What about a new edition of it with kids today? Do you think I'd it love work, to think. I'd, I'd love to think that it would. I mean, we're losing yeah. Hey Hey Saturday. I think we're losing a whole genre of, Which of programs that we feel really fond about. Yes, I was going to say it's interesting. Young talent told me for what, 18 years. Yeah. Uh, hey Hey has gone for 25. Um, that there's, it's unusual that a show can actually last that long and mm. remain very mm. successful, mm. Uh, I think, anywhere in the world. Yeah, I was going to say, it wouldn't happen in England. We should be no very way. proud of the fact. Yeah. I don't know what you think about those two mm. shows. You should be very proud Whatever of Whatever you can say about Daryl. Yeah, he's actually done something right. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> absolutely. And, and John, Johnny Young John as well. Yeah. I mean, he's still doing lots of things, I think, mm. with Foxtel and other things. You I wonder if it's also about the Australian people, whether they're, they're particularly a loyal nation you know you, you like to associate and you and you enjoy that well, I think it's, it's, it's the baby boomers isn't it you grew, a lot of us grew up with it and it's what you were saying you hang on to this image of hey hey it's Saturday when it was a morning show and then it became an evening and show I, and I suspect it has something to do with the fact that we're able to laugh at ourselves so much you know yeah. as cheesy as we were we're pretty natural kids yeah well no, I know if we'd had to be known right. in America oh you know it. and yeah. they actually tried to do it in America a number of times John Young went over and tried to sell it and they would audition kids and they'd end up with 45 million Shirley Temples. Yeah. Exactly. And we oh, weren't that. And, and also the pressure, what happened to Lena Zavaroni in, in England? Do you know exactly. about Lena Zavaroni? No. Oh, oh, she was a sort of a child star. Um, the, the, yeah, that's right. She, she just recently died from anorexia. anorexia. 30, 34, 32. I think. Yeah, mm. that's right. Well, the pressure of all that eventually you know, made her life a very unhappy one. And mm. uh, it seems that 
with the odd exception in Young Talent Time, uh, that has not been the case for most yeah. people. You look so glowing with health, don't you? You do. Oh, that's good. What, what are you up to are now? You well, well I'm, I'm doing the show. <laughs> oh, God, we have to get everyone to come along Tell to the Athenaeum Theatre on the 29th. Uh, it's my first stab at producing, if you okay. like, and mm -hmm. that's been interesting, gathering 32 actors. It's the biggest cast in the history of the world. It's huge. Mm. And it's a show actually inspired by the AIDS quilt. Mm -hmm. um, 32 characters tell their story. There's 10 beautiful songs, uh, four singers, there's a small chamber orchestra, and uh, it's on the 29th of the Athenaeum Theatre. What's and the... $32, $22. We kept the prices really low. Oh, that mm -hmm. is good. What's the full title of the show? I'll just say... Elegies, as in E-L-E-G-I-E-S. It's a tribute. It's a poetic tribute. Elegies for angels, punks and raging queens. They're all sorts of characters. Very funny. It's full of music. And, uh, and it's got John Wood from Blue yes. Healers, Amanda Muggleton. Brooke Satchwell. Brooke and Satchwell. And Jane Turner. Turner. Jane, Jane Turner. Jane Turner. <coughs> Comedy <coughs> Company. Annette, of course. Annette, I mean, not as Miss Penelope. Penelope, no. okay. Just as myself. Opal Ross from Rent. Mm -hmm. um, Amanda Richard Monkton, Grieve. did you mention? Yeah. Richard Grieve from Boy From Oz. Mm. Oh, so you're not on as Miss Penelope, no, you're on as Annette. No, I'm actually doing a character. A serious. A serious character. Serious. A character, okay. character. It is a black, it is not a black comedy, it's a comedy, musical comedy, and it celebrates yeah. the life of people living with and affected by HIV. When you talk about HIV, you think it's going to be really sad, but it's, it's, it's everything. Do, it's yeah. a bit of everything. Yeah. There'll be a few tears, but there'll be a lot of laughing too. I mean, I think I read somewhere that you actually so you cried after you read the script. I did. It's funny. It's People ring up and have them on board as far as casting. They say, oh, what role am I going to be playing? And I go, oh, let me, uh, I'll flick through. Mm -hmm. like and I read it. Oh, this, and I start reading it and you're tearing Aww. up. And you, because some of them so, are so, so it is going to be sad then. Oh, yeah, but there are other roles that are absolutely outrageous. And the, the songs, from what I know oh, of, beautiful. are terrific. And the final song where, if I'm not Everyone getting in a way, everyone joins in. It's a gospel such, song. It's a fabulous song yeah. and it just is so uplifting. Yeah. Which is what really, I guess, the whole thing about elegy is about. Is, yeah. It's a tribute. Celebration. Yeah. Uh, uh, from other people who produced the show, apparently at the end of the, the night, there's a bit of a thing, reaction from the audience, Which because they're so moved. Yeah. And oh, it yeah, is based on that. stories of the quilt, isn't it? Yep. And we're having a party in the foyer afterwards. It's a bit of an industry party. Yeah. A few songs. Everyone's going to have a drink. So it'll be a good night uh, for $32 or $22 oh, concession. That's And all the money is going to... To the, the Victorian AIDS Council. <laughs> that's fantastic. Tennis that's player of, in the middle. Sorry? No, go on. Have we said everything? Oh. Have, have we it's got it all out? Like, no, Jillian's playing a game in the middle. There. I am. It is part of National AIDS Day, isn't it? Yes. National AIDS Day celebrations? Yeah. yeah. She's nice. Oh, well, so I've done that. She does. She does. Which, well. which yeah. by the well. way, is um, the AIDS Walk. AIDS Walk. Yes. November yes. 28th, down on St Kilda Foreshore, 10am. Don't forget that one. And then you've got Elegies on the 29th. That's right. Yes. And you've got World AIDS Day on the 1st of December. And, and about to sell ribbons. the Victorian AIDS Council is still looking for people to sell red ribbons. So right. please call Victorian AIDS Council. I'm well, telling you, there are so many volunteers in there that are doing so much good work. Yeah. I'm, I'm working out of the Victorian AIDS Council, and I tell you, they work their tail off. So yes. You know, the AIDS problem is still an issue. Mm. And, well, and it is. It's, it's, it's quite clearly shown from the figures that, that uh, people are practicing safe sex less now yes. than they were in the late 80s. But while we're on good causes, Michael is, is champing at the bit to tell us a little bit about BedTV because, of course, we're a charity, aren't we? We're registered. You can donate to us and, and, and um, get it written off for tax. So um, Yeah, that's right, you can. Um, I, it's, Vent TV has actually come a long, long way over the years. I think it's in, in, inception in 93, 94. Um, you may have seen um, some old new faces that um, <laughs> have occurred over the years. Some of the most positive changes that I've witnessed is that um, we, we now own a lot of our own camera equipment and AV equipment. <laughs> um, we have easy access to entire edit suites. Um, and there's definitely a good blend of um, fluffy and light um, programming as well as a lot of sort of serious stuff. Um, it's good to see um, that we have a home now here at 32 Lonsdale Street in the city with a studio where we're broadcasting now live to tape. And um, the, the main thing that I want to say to new volunteers, new members, is if you come in, um, take the initiative, take the step, gather the people together, go out, shoot your programs yeah. and come in. We okay. certainly need We're gonna people. actually going to go and see something right now because we've been told that we're going to see the very exciting bit of the um, of the market to have the opening. Here we go. It's all live. It's all happening now. <coughs> it goes down on Mike. It goes down on Mike. So rude. Come on, Matt. Come on, Matt. Come on. Let's get this groovy bit. Okay. Oh, look, there's a carrot. Let's look at the carrot. Here's our celebrity. Oh, wait. Just be a second. Okay. 
finally got Paris on Bent TV. We had to come to her, of course. Say hi to Melbourne. Darling, you've made a mistake. It's not Paris, it's Rita. Oh, why did I say I'm that? the bitchy one. <laughs> I knew that, Rita. Why did I say that? Uh, you two are always interchangeable, though. You like bookends, but sort of upside down, oh, Rita. Look, it's very hard to tell us apart sometimes. I'm actually the drunken, bitchy one. I actually had my photo taken with you at a warehouse party once, dressed in army gear, and you two were in paint and leather. Have, yeah, yeah. Red and red and black. Yeah. Are you enjoying the opening of the market? I enjoy every opening, don't you? <laughs> Come on. Look at That's that. a leading question. We're going to go and have a look at the tunnel. The, yeah, the tunnel. Oh, the tunnel, yeah. There's drink lockers in the tunnel. They're fantastic. Exactly. Get your own key. Here we are talking to Rita, but we can't say the word either. <laughs> At um, the market, come on, let's go have a look at the tunnel. Say bye, Rita. Say bye, Melbourne. Goodbye, Melbourne. Ooh. Oh, that's wonderful. That was looking more exciting. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to take off that, yeah. that club. Um, we want to say very much thank you to our new sponsors, DTs, and to Dale, Chills and Bruce, and also to Cafe Design, who have donated this lovely mineral water. Mm. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Next time, put some flavour in it, please, because we can do with a red cordial. Yes. But, Johnny, you're coming back, aren't you? not going. Indeed. No, right. no way you're going, because you'll be singing in a minute. Okay. So, see you soon. Cheers. <laughs> So, um, telling us why you should become a volunteer of our organisation. This isn't Amway. It sounds a bit like Amway of the Forum, isn't it? You've got to brainwash them, Michael, <laughs> and give them the phone number. Okay. Um, well, before I disappear into that, Vortex. Three <laughs> pardons for that. Vortex are three pardons. Look, the main thing is get involved. We need you in front of the camera. We need you behind the camera. Take the initiative. It's easy to shoot stuff. And this is the number that you call. Um, call us, call us, we're open 24 hours, there's an answering machine there if, if, if we're not there. 03 And we'll flash this card up a little bit later on mm -hmm. towards the end of the program. Thank yeah. you. And as the second part of our brainwashing program, we're going to actually take you behind the scenes now. Um, Matt, would you do the honours, please? I will. Usually we um, require people to actually come in before we show them the uh, studio tour, but today you're going to get a treat, and I'll just leave that there because I won't be needing that. And I think um, we walk and talk at the same time. And, uh, See that train yeah. I might have to go this way and Ooh, come and visit our control room and see what positions you might like to fill. Bye. <laughs> she wants to go. Okay. This oh my God, we've been saved. You have indeed. This is our control room where we get things going and basically like we either like make a picture or very occasionally we stuff up a little bit. But that's why we need your help. This is John, he's doing our DA, our timekeeping, credit preparation. Basically, get, making sure Lauren, our director here, knows what she's doing. <laughs> now, Lauren's job is to get everybody in order, get the show in order, well make sure that any little Just hassles are sorted out, that sort of thing. We have Matt over on the end there with the headphones on. He's doing audio. I can't hear you. He can't hear you. <laughs> so um, basically, we need improvements on our audio people. Thanks, Matt. Oh, and, we have, and we have an assistant today, and it's really good to see new people coming in and yeah, trying things out. Yeah. Yay! Actually get them. And he's kick ass. And yeah, and we we've got um, some pers <laughs> some person down there. Uh, he's he tends to just um, he, just he doesn't off the street, Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't do he doesn't do a lot, <laughs> but um, sometimes when he's feeling a bit bored, we just let him have a play with around. Torn little rip James. There. <laughs> with with the tape machine. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's about it from the control room. Please, people, we need you. And back to Gillian. Okay, and, no, no, no. and 
That's beautiful. Thank you very much, Matt. Yeah. Quite air traffic controllers, don't they? In there, I wouldn't like any of them to be guiding me down. Or maybe all of the Egyptian airlines. Maybe they can get a job with the Egyptian airlines. Well, I was talking about filming and video and the internet. You've got a bit, a bit of a story for us, haven't you? I've got some gossip, and we all love a bit of gossip. There was a nice little article on Victorian Adams. What's her husband's name, David? Beckham. 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 And so Posh Spice, as she is more commonly known. Now, first little bit of gossip, obviously, is that she's just missed out on a role in the big screen version of Charlie's Angels, which we're also oh. devastated about. <laughs> but let's face it, she doesn't have the hair, does she? No. no. You can't do it with all that, that spiky stuff. Yeah. No, 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 no. Lucy Liu is actually going to be playing um, one of the parts. And oh, Catherine really? And Diaz and Drew Barrymore. Oh, which interesting. Which is very interesting. Mm. But apparently there was a little bit of scandal because uh, Posh and her newly husband had decided to make a little bit of a sexual romp. And of course they put it on video as you all want to do and now it's disappeared. So if anyone's uh, cruising <laughs> the internet <laughs> and they see two naked bodies ripping about on screen and she's singing some latest top ten, but you know, the thing is, why do people do this? Well, she could, yes, in the throes of ecstasy. I don't know. On, and you know, the thing is, these guys have always been big publicity hunters. I mean, we know that, so you can't. Are there any videos Miranda. floating around of you, John? Oh, dozens of them. <laughs> <laughs> and he's wearing a little three piece suit and all of them. Yeah. A thong. But I, you sort of have to wonder is this a publicity stunt? Mm. I mean, really. I mean, and how silly. If you if you go to, well, I mean, they were on the honeymoon, so what? they did the tape. What did they do? Leave it in the room? Yeah, exactly. Take it on the beach oh. with mm. them? I mean, put it in the car. What the housemaid stole it or... Oh, I'm just thinking. And what, did they put a big sign on it saying, this is our sex video, do not take away? <laughs> <laughs> How silly are these people? Probably something like that. It just goes to show you all that money and still no brains. Mm. Absolutely. Well, I don't think it would be terribly exciting. Would you want to see Posh and, and David? I mean, they're married. Half of oh, the fun exactly. and the, the, the sordid part of it's gone, isn't it? Exactly. I want to know who controls the camera. Oh, you, put it on a, you put it on a oh, tripod. Oh, or <laughs> uh, apparently, there are lots of different ways of doing it. It's not that I've ever done it. Not from experience, you're speaking, of course. In fact, you could hire any one of these people <laughs> to come round and uh, enjoy the room. You reckon that'll Well, I this do. week um, was, or last week, the um, opening or release of QMail, www.qmail.com, which is an Australian gay related email service so you can log on and get your free email and there's a lot of um, you know clicks links to other sites that type of thing um they hope bit tv will be one soon so do mm -hmm. we so, oh, so so click on your q mail so how do you get it www no when it can't advertise <laughs> work it out for yourself <laughs> yeah. 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 But i, I met there? them we were at the um opening of trade last week which was jocks which is now mm -hmm. called the trade bar mm -hmm. and um there was they had a bit of release the night before, and we mm. met up with, I think it's Chris. I hope it's Chris. Sorry, Chris, if I got your name wrong. And the guys from Trade Bar. It was very interesting because they've got a cyber cafe in um, Trade Bar now. There's this right. whole room, and there's like five computers, and it's just help yourself. But don't you love the way nowadays we have fax machines, we've got answering machines, we've got email, we've got mobile phones, and, and you can never mail. get through to anyone. <laughs> anyone <laughs> and no one ever gets back to you. Mm. We've got every way to make it easier to contact people, but do you, no, no, if someone doesn't get back to you, then there's a reason. Oh, you don't okay. want to get back no, to yes, you. Exactly. And you're asking them for money, aren't In you? business, I've got a, a friend who, who is a publicist, and she mm. said, if you don't get onto them, don't leave a message. Yeah, I think, I think you're right, that because that's, it's always a good excuse if they haven't got message service to ring them again. If you leave them that message, it's a great screening facility for them mm. to think, oh, the undesirables. Yes. I'm sure people just, you know, in business, I'm sure they could, I don't know, if yeah, you get 20 you, or 50 sorry. emails or messages a day, and you go, and you must come back from London and go, oh, push the erase button. <laughs> Oh, all too hard. <laughs> if you really need to get through to someone urgently, you just say to them, I need to speak to you urgently, <laughs> urgently. And um, they get through. Yeah, they, email's they not good you. though because they know who you are. And, you know, they, they'll probably see all that name. They've emailed me lots of times, delete. Mm. Well, actually, a, a friend of mine said, oh, you, you've got to put um, to Steve from Mick or something like that on it so I don't delete them and think that it's junk mail because yeah. so many people get so much I hate um, that junk, junk mail. mail yeah. Yeah. Spam! Actually, yeah. the address comes up so you know whether it's a junk mail one yeah. or not. And yeah. if you've got one of those things on your email, I'm not doing this very technically, but it, it shows you a little summary of each email and you can mm. tell what it, what it is yeah. and then just dump it if you need to. I love email. I love 
I did too. I don't like the junk. My sister sent me a gorgeous one the other day. It took forever to download, and oh. it's just a question from the HR department, Human Resources Department. Are you satisfied with your salary package? And it says a yes and a no, and he's supposed to click. But every time you go to click on the no, it moves. I've seen that. <laughs> every time. Every time. Right. And eventually you click on the yes, and it goes, we thought so. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the computer show on Ben TV. Oh, yeah. well, that's lovely. Yeah. Well, a few little tips there. Now, we're going to try this for a final time to show you some very exciting footage, which is our favourite word, our word du jour, on Squeal. And uh, we've got two minutes. Speaking to um, Kelly Le Gore, who we all thought was dead, did we not? I didn't. But certainly is not. So <laughs> Don't speak for me. She's that's something to be celebrated. <laughs> and um, let's go to it. You're a witch. Get those lights off. Get me a light. I'm under an air conditioning duct. Can you help me? Fabulous, Miss Carolyn Lagor. Bitch and kitchen. No, it's not bitch and kitchen. This is squeal. This is um, this is the main one. We're going to have some chance. The show I watch every Monday night. Kerry always watches. At nine o'clock, without fail. She's so social. I love her. This is one of the institutions of our gay scene. This is Miss Kerry Lagor. If you don't know her out there. I'm explain to you. She's not an institution. She's a pioneer. Terminology. She so, is above her so time. Even though you guys may have a biased opinion, what do you think about the renovations and the new well, look? Well, personally, I think it's I wonderful. don't give a fuck what she's got to say. I'll listen to her. If you could say one word to, to describe her, won't use one word. Coco Brown, 50s interior, That's Japanese. <laughs> it's the year 2000 before we've even arrived there. It's very now. Very now. We're going to... And you're very Pucci, now, too. Pucci, well, you know, Pucci. I've been I've been to one of those warehouse shops. Special. Fabulous, are you? Secrets of makeup, sweaty. Why haven't you been panned down? Darling, get under an air conditioning duct like I it's am, honestly. I am. I am under an air conditioning duct. I can't bear it. We've got to go, because we've got lots of people to meet. Lovely to see you. Fabulous. Hello to Squeal. I love it. Every Monday night at 9 o'clock. You're heaven. I'm the only woman that's You're got both doing this. shining. Look at so I get Channel 31, and, that means and I adore Channel 31. And that means that the people all around Australia, except South Australia, because they're a bit silly, they don't understand that they need cables to get Optus, can watch you all around Australia, you're nationwide, nationwide Lagor. Excuse me. <laughs> We've got to go. We've got to go. Don't make a sound open. Oh, it was exciting. Mini. Sorry, I was hey. This is Minnie, everybody. This is this is my new girlfriend. Isn't she gorgeous? <laughs> Not so good. yeah, bit of a dog, your girlfriend. No, she, was, <laughs> she was licking my ankle under the table. <gasps> you hussy! And I was trying very hard to keep a straight face because it was quite pleasurable. <laughs> I know that's why I love her. She's got a lovely. She's time. just beautiful, and she's been so good. Not you know, she hasn't been making lots of noise around here. She's, she's been in the studio all the time. Mm. And just, you know, being very quiet and very well behaved. And what a lovely... Apparently they're in Channel 9 for years there was this cat who had free reign of the place oh, really? and would just occasionally pop up on a... Yeah, and it was a rule that even during um, during a taping, if it you know nice. popped up on the table, you weren't to, you know, during the news or Well, anything. she's just about to do it, isn't yes. she? Now, just tell us, and John, when your show is going to be on. We <laughs> have to get over, over Minnie. Hello. Uh, on the 29th of <laughs> November, uh, the Athenaeum Theatre, 8 o'clock. It's an all-star cast, um, and... Get there, be it. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, come please, along. come along. You'll love it. Good night. Book of Ticket Tech. Bye-bye. Ticket Master. Bye. 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 Bye.